Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video of Unit 11. In this video we're going to talk about how we could compare the reactivity of metals. So in Unit 10 you learned about the metal reactivity series. So let's recall and refresh our memory about that. The first type of metals on the top, I mentioned that they are highly reactive metals. The ones that are in the middle, they're moderately reactive. And the ones that are down below, they are least reactive. Or let's just say they're less reactive. Of course, some of the metals are unreactive. For example, gold over here, it is unreactive. But for now, let's focus at the whole picture, the whole reactivity series. Now, For this particular unit, we'll learn about three different types of reactions about metals. So the first one is the reactions of metals with oxygen, which we're going to talk about in this video. So oxygen is O2, as we all know. Now, second we'll talk about is water, which is in liquid state. However, not all metals are able to react with water because they're not strong enough, or, or I should say they're not as reactive. So instead, for those that are not highly reactive, they'll react with steam instead. Steam is in gaseous state, so it's a gas. And we know water and steam, they're H2O. And finally, we'll learn about the reactions of metals with dilute acids. All right, so let's talk about the first one, reactions of metals with oxygen. So most metals, not all, most metals, they react with oxygen in air to produce oxides. So let's have a look at the word equation. You have a metal plus oxygen reacting to form metal oxides. And usually this reaction would require heat to start. So an example, you have sodium reacting with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Of course, you have some other examples. Let me use one you've learned about. So calcium plus oxygen, you get, what will you get? Calcium and oxygen, what will you get? Yes, you'll get calcium oxide. And you have learned about calcium oxide in chapter four, where we talked about the limestone cycle. Now let's move on to the table. Now for this particular table, I want you to divide it into three groups. So the first group over here, only potassium and sodium in the first group. All right, so you can just draw a line. And then afterwards you have calcium all the way until mercury. Draw another line. And then silver, platinum, gold, there are the third group. So let me talk about the first group, potassium and sodium. Sodium. Okay, why are they in one group? Because these two metals, first off, they're highly reactive. So they only require a very small amount of heat. So they require gentle heating to start a reaction. That's the first thing. The second thing I want you to know is what observations do they give? All right, the observations. So because metals reacting with oxygen in the air is very similar to what we have been, what we have learned about in the flame test. So potassium, when it reacts with oxygen, it burns vigorously with a lilac flame. How about for sodium? Sodium, it will react to form a golden yellow flame. All right, I'm using orange color because yellow will be hard to see. Now let's go down to the second group. Calcium, magnesium, aluminium, all the way up to mercury. They're able to react with oxygen, but you need a strong amount of heat. So calcium it burns with a brick red flame. Magnesium has burns with a very bright white light. Whoa, very bright white light, very bright white light. That's like a tongue, tongue twister. Anyway, so you get the point, right? So you need to know whether they're able to react with gentle heating or strong heating 
And second of all, you will need to know the observations, what flame color. And third, you would need to check out on the oxide being formed, which is pretty easy. It's just the name of the metal and you add the word oxide. It's the name of the metal and you get oxide. So for example, magnesium, you get magnesium oxide. Fairly simple. All right. So just one more pointer for copper and mercury. I've put them in the second group. However, you still need a very strong amount of heat to start the reaction. Now, why do now can you think about it? Why do why do you only potassium and sodium? They only require gentle heating, but for metals like copper and mercury, they need very strong heating. What's what's the big deal? Yes, it is based on the metal reactivity series. The ones that are up on top, they are highly reactive, so they only require a very small amount of heat. The ones that are more down below, it takes a more larger amount of heat, basically. Eventually, those that are down below, they are not able to react at all. These two. Let's go back. So the last group, silver, platinum, and gold, they're not able to react with oxygen in air, which makes sense because they are not as reactive. All right. Metals react more rapidly with metals react more rapidly in pure oxygen than in air. That makes a lot of sense because in air, of course, you have different substances like nitrogen, carbon dioxide, but in oxygen in pure oxygen, obviously you only have pure oxygen, meaning you only have oxygen, right? So it's pretty easy to react in pure oxygen. So I won't go through the flame colors again. I'm sure all of you should be very familiar by now. But diagram E is a new one. So iron powder, it burns in sparks, with sparks. Pretty cool, huh? You see the sparks over here. Just a few more pointers. So many metals, they are dull in color. The reason behind is not because they're dull, but because they form an oxide layer on the surface. As I told you, metals are able to react with oxygens, right? Some metals, not all. Now, because of this reaction, metals reacting with oxygen, there is an oxide layer being formed on the top. So this oxide layer, you can say it covers the surface, which makes it dull. However, one very interesting thing is, when we cut these metals, you know, give them a freshly trimmed cut, you know, you give them a, maybe a mohawk. No, I'm just joking. You just give them a cut. That part where you give them the cut will appear super shiny. All right. Last, gold is the least reactive metal. It does not react with substance in the environment. Thus, it always appears shiny. And that is one of the reasons why gold is very expensive. Ah, one more thing. Potassium and sodium, they're very reactive, as we know from the metal reactivity series. So I mentioned about this before. In order to store these two metals, we need to store them in paraffin oil. So paraffin oil can be its made out of petroleum. So this prevents the metals from reacting with oxygen in air. Okay, you can see it forms like a barrier between oxygen and the metals. So let's recap what we've learned. So we talked about, today we talked about the, oh, let me change it. We talked about the reaction of metals with oxygen, right? Oops, with oxygen. So first off, let me choose this. Potassium, sodium, they're able to burn on gentle heating. So a small amount of heat is enough. How about for the second group? Let me use red. Calcium all the way to mercury, they're able to burn on strong heating let me add 
for copper and mercury, they're able to burn on very strong heating. So, but I like to put them in the same group, so it's easier for us. And the last group over here, we have silver and gold. They are unreactive. They have no reaction with oxygen. So, of course, I also talked about the word equation. Let us write that down as well. Metal plus oxygen. You would get a metal oxide. And I've also taught you how to name some metal oxides. For example, let's look at potassium. The name would be metal plus the oxygen. When you have the reaction, the name would be potassium oxide. Right, just an example. All right. So that's the first part of Unit 11, reactions of metals with oxygen. In the next video, we'll talk about reactions of metals with water slash steam. All right. That's the end of this. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.